Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to our course Physical Chemistry 101. My name is Dr. Lauf and today's topic is how to express a gas in numbers microscopically. We have seen that the state of a gas can mathematically be described by the equation of state PV equals nRT. We will now try to explain the properties of a gas on the basis of model concepts. The conceptual model, which we will discuss today, is called kinetic theory of gases. The ideal gas law describes a gas macroscopically, it gives a relation between its state variables mathematically. The kinetic theory of gases describes a gas microscopically. A conceptual model. Previously, gas was a, some kind of black box to us. We are able to make measurements on it and could determine macroscopic state variables such as pressure, volume, temperature, viscosity, ether, lambda, thermal conductivity, and so on. Now we want to set up a model which allows us to get a deeper understanding of a gas and which relates these macroscopic measurable quantities to microscopic quantities. Which measurement is not as easy. These microscopic quantities are essentially properties of the gas molecules. For example, the number capital N of particles, the mass M of the particle, the size of the particle sigma, velocity v, and so on. In kinetic theory of gases, in its simplest form, it is assumed that a gas consists of many, many mass points. The volume of these mass points is very much smaller than the volume occupied by the gas. These mass points have no interaction with each other unless they collide. The particles are in constant motion, collide with each other and with the container walls. Because there are very, very many particles and because their velocities and energies are constantly changing, we have to deal with mean values. Mean values are represented by a horizontal bar on the symbol or by two square brackets. So the mean velocity V bar is the sum of all velocities of all particles divided by the number of particles, capital N. Let me anticipate the gist of the kinetic theory of gases. Temperature of a gas is directly proportional to the average translational energy of the particles. In fact, temperature is just another term for the average translational energy of the gas. In formula notation, E bar equals 3 halves Boltzmann's constant times temperature. A particle has three translational degrees of freedom to move in space. So this results in one half k times t for each direction. The pressure P is calculated by the following formula from microscopic properties. One half mv squared corresponds to the kinetic energy and it is divided by the volume. So pressure is a measure of energy density. At room temperature, about 300 kelvins, the average translational energy of any gaseous particle is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 21st joule, or 0.039 electron volts, or 3.7 kilojoules per mole. Comparing two gases, for example oxygen, O2, and hydrogen, H2, under standard conditions, we generally state different densities. 
oxygen, which has got a density of 1.3 grams per liter, about the same as air, is substantially less dense than hydrogen. 0.08 grams per liter. Since both gases are at the same temperature, they both have the same kinetic energy of translation. 3.7 kilojoules per mole. Same temperature, same kinetic energy. Kinetic energy can be expressed as 1 half times m times v squared. If this has to hold for both gases, there must be a mathematical relation between the velocities and the masses. We arrive at so-called Graham's law, which states that the mean velocities are inversely proportional to the square roots of the masses. Because the mass of hydrogen is 16 times smaller than the mass of oxygen, the average velocity of hydrogen is 4 times root of 16 larger than the average velocity of oxygen. Oxygen has an average velocity of 444 meters per second. Hydrogen is faster than 1700 meters per second. The kinetic energy of gases is closely linked with the two scientists Maxwell and Boltzmann. They developed this famous equation which describes the velocity distribution in a gas. To put it bluntly, the formula shows how many particles move at a certain speed. On the x-axis we plot the velocity v and on the y-axis we plot the number of particles and now comes the clarification. Number of particles that move in the velocity interval dv. You see that most oxygen particles, the blue curve, travel at the velocity of about 400 meters per second. There are also very fast particles moving at over 1000 meters per second. These will have a high level of energy and are important for starting certain kinetic processes. Equally, there are particles that move very slowly. Mathematically speaking, the Maxwell-Boltzmann velocity distribution is a product of a parabolic function, v squared in purple, with an exponential function, e to the negative mv squared over 2kt, with a maximum at about 400 meters per second for oxygen. For hydrogen, the red curve to the maximal Boltzmann distribution is much flatter, but also shifted to the right. This velocity distribution is not symmetrical, but shifted slightly to the right. It's not the same as the Gaussian bell-shaped curve. There are three velocities that deserve our special attention. One. The most probable velocity, v sub m, corresponds to the maximum in the maximum Boltzmann distribution curve. By curve sketching, we can easily find the extremum by setting the first derivative to zero. We obtain the expression square root of 2rt over m. The most important velocity is the average velocity v bar slightly right of the maximum. V bar equals root of 8RT over pi times m. There is another important velocity. It is the root mean squared velocity, RMS. This is the velocity of the particles that exhibit exactly the average energy. In these three formulas, you can either use R over M, gas constant over molar mass, or the ratio K over M, the Boltzmann's constant over the mass of an individual particle. Anyway, it is important to always use consistent units. I recommend SI units. The particles collide with the wall and with one another. 
If you want to calculate the number of collisions of a particle with other particles, then you have to deal with the concept of collision cross-section. We need to mathematically define clearly what a collision is. Consider a particle B moving from left to right with velocity V. Around the velocity vector of particle B, imagine a kind of cylinder. This collision cylinder has a cross-section sigma. A collision cross-section. If another particle is located with a standard of mass in this cylinder, then this particle experiences a collision. There will be no collision with particle A prime as its center of mass is outside of the collision cylinder. In contrast, particle A will collide with B because its center of mass is located within the cylinder. We now simply have to count the number of particles in the collision cylinder to get the number of collisions. The collision cylinder has a basal phase sigma and a length proportional to V bar. That is the volume V bar times sigma. We introduce square root of 2 as a correction factor for the relative movement of the particles and multiply by the particle density capital N over V. This equation gives Z the collision frequency of a particle. The collision cross-section sigma can be estimated geometrically as pi times d squared, d is the particle diameter, with the values for argon at standard condition, relative 400 meters per second particle density 2.4 times 10 to the 25th particle per cubic meter, atomic radius of 0.17 nanometers, collision cross-section of 0.36 nanometers squared, results in a collision frequency of 4.9 gigahertz. Each particle collides in one second with 4.9 billion other particles. This brings us to one of the most important parameters in kinetic theory of gases, the mean free path lambda bar. Though a gas particle is very fast, about 400 meters per second, it's always hindered in progression as it collides with many other particles. A gas particle zigzags its way in a so-called random walk through the gas. The mean distance traveled by a particle between two collisions is called mean free path lambda bar. V bar is the horizontal distance that is traveled in one second. Z is the number of collisions in one second, so lambda bar is equal to V bar over Z. Eventually, we obtain this equation. Lambda bar equals 1 over square root of 2 n over V sigma. With the known data of argon at standard conditions, we obtain lambda bar equal 82 nanometers. A gas particle moves about 400 times as far as its own diameter before it collides with another particle and so changes direction and velocity. By comparison, the average distance between two gas molecules in argon at standard conditions is only 3.5 nanometers. So the drawing is not to scale. The particle density N over V can be calculated as P over KT by using the ideal gas law. Plugging this into our equation, we find that the mean free path is proportional to temperature and inversely proportional to pressure. The gas particles also collide with the system's walls. We will do an estimation for the frequency of wall collisions, Z sub W. The higher the gas density, the more collisions will occur. 
So C sub W will be proportional to the particle density N over V. Collisions will also increase the mean velocity of the gas particles, whereas the collision cross-section will be irrelevant, because even the smallest particles will hit the wall. Eventually, we arrive at the following equation, a correction factor with one force in allowing for not every gas particle flying towards the wall. Plugging in the numbers for argon at standard conditions, we calculate that every square meter wall is hit by 2.4 times 10 to the 25th particles every second. Pressure is a consequence of these collisions. Consider an elastic collision of a gas particle with a wall. The x component of the particle's momentum is m times v sub x before the collision and negative m times v sub x afterwards. So the momentum transfer 2m v sub x results in a force on the wall. Dividing the average force by the wall surface, we obtain pressure. The mean free path and the mean velocity of a gas particle play a major role in vacuum technology, for instance, mass spectrometry. To separate different ions according to their mass in a mass filter, these ions must not collide with other particles on the way from ion source to ion detected. We need a pressure which allows for a mean free path of the ions which is greater than the dimension of the mass spectrum of the device. So we need high vacuum or ultra high vacuum. Analyzing air in a mass spectrometer, we get the following mass spectrum. 28, the molar mass of nitrogen. 32, the molar mass of oxygen. 18, water from humidity. The theory of gases is also helpful to various methods of surface coating, such as physical vapor deposition, PVD, or chemical vapor deposition, CVD. Furthermore, the mean free path plays an important role in conductive heat and mass transfer, that is, diffusion. Let's summarize kinetic gas theory. A gas is made up of particles moving at high velocity the volume of the individual particle being much smaller than the total volume of the gas. Collisions of the particles through the container wall generate pressure. Collisions between the gas particles result in a mean free path which, for example, limits the rate of mass and heat transfer. The macroscopic state variable temperature corresponds to the average translational energy of the particle. The pressure we can measure macroscopically corresponds to the energy density. The mean velocity of a typical gas at standard condition is a few 100 meters per second and is inversely proportional to the square root of the mass. The mean free path depends on the bulkiness of the particles, quantified by the collision cross section, sigma, and the particle density. The number of wall collisions is proportional to the gas density and the average velocity. Thanks for watching. Bye.